So this is going to be a bit of a longish video. So I'm going to do my best to put timestamps into the description so you can see which questions are getting answered when. And, um, and uh, you know, you don't necessarily have to watch the whole thing. But if you are going to um, skip some of it, then I'm going to, I'm going to put a timestamp in there for my last point. And I'd, I'd like you all to watch that. It's important to me and I think it'll be important to you as well. Thank you. Well, hello. Good to see everybody. And uh, just decided to do a little bit of a question and answer video. The questions have already been asked. So this is, I guess, just an answer video. So while I'm walking the dogs, you might hear me huffing and puffing a bit because uh, they're pulling hard. <laughs> but while I'm walking the dogs, I'm just going to talk through um, a few things. Been getting a lot of questions, um, a lot of questions about puppies lately. Questions about shipping and, you know, a lot of the usual questions. So, and a lot of new interest, and we're very grateful for that. A lot of it's coming from referrals. So to those of you that have been giving us such excellent references, thank you. Thank you so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link to this video and copy it and send it to each of the new uh, prospective puppy buyers or those that are showing interest. And maybe this will answer a lot of the questions. Okay, question number one. Do we have puppies? Well, here we are, March 20, whatever it is today, 24th or 5th. And we do not have any puppies right now. Millie here on the left and Sandy on the right. Ginger over there. Poppy. Those are our four females. None of them are pregnant. So at the moment, no puppies and no pregnant dogs. But we're expecting actually all four of them to go into heat within the next few weeks. We're going to breed Poppy for sure when she goes into heat. It'll be her first litter. She's at the perfect age for it. We'll probably be, breed Millie here as well, most likely. And not sure about the other two yet. They're, uh, they're both doing really, really well. You could certainly breed them, but it also comes down to a matter of space. And we certainly don't want four litters at the same time. So if they all go into heat at the same time, we'll probably only breed two. So that's the question about do we have puppies? Which kind of leads into the next question, which is, is there a waiting list? Yes, there's a waiting list. And there's quite a few names on the list right now. Probably close to 20 altogether. And so then it might sound like, wow, that's a long wait. But the reality is, we often have two litters at the same time or within a week or two of each other, 10, 12 puppies each time. Um, we can we can get through the waiting list quite quickly. So even though there's a waiting list, don't let that be a deterrent. What we do is we put we put all the names on the waiting list, and then when we have puppies, uh, I'll, I'll check in with everybody regarding deposits and securing a puppy. I don't take deposits until there's actually puppies on the ground, so to speak, or in the kennel. Um, I don't know. I know that other breeders sometimes will take deposits when they don't even have a pregnant dog. I won't do that. I think it's not really fair to tie up somebody's money when I don't even have puppies. Um, I said we, we wouldn't take deposits till they're actually on the ground. Actually, that's not quite correct. Uh, we will take them when the dogs are confirmed pregnant, which is, I usually like to wait until they're five weeks pregnant because then there's no, there's no doubt about it. Uh, so yeah, we'll have, we often have up to 20 puppies at a time so we can get through a waiting list very quickly. The other thing is when we know we're going to have puppies and I go through that waiting list, a lot of times someone says, well, the timing is not quite right. We want to wait for the next litter. Sometimes they say we've already found one. 
So sometimes that waiting list of 20 names might actually only be 13 or 14 names or 15 names. So again, if you're number 26 on the list and five or six people decide to wait or have already found a puppy, you could get the next litter. So it's good to keep, keep a waiting list. But uh, yeah, don't be deterred by that. We can get through puppies very quickly. In fact, I kind of have two different waiting lists. One is for those that want the next litter and one for those that don't want a litter until late fall. So there's a few different ways we can do that. Okay, next question. Um, how do they travel? Well, we typically use WestJet. And uh, that's been working very well for us. In fact, that's about all we use. We use WestJet for all of our puppies. They're the only ones that fly everywhere we need to go in Canada. Air Canada is currently not flying any pets to the East Coast. So that really only leaves WestJet. WestJet um, sells cargo space to some other companies. But in the end, it's still a WestJet plane that they're going on. So the puppies come on WestJet. And we can ship two puppies in a crate at one time. Two puppies in a crate at once, which means when two owners go to pick up their puppies, one of them will get to keep the crate, the other won't. We don't charge for the crate, so it's kind of just a bonus. And we typically give the crate to the owner who booked their puppy first, just so you know. In a way, it's not a huge bonus. It's a little bonus. But the puppy's going to outgrow that crate very quickly anyway. So even the owner that gets the crate is still going to have to get a larger crate a few months down the road. It just buys them a bit of time. That's all. Okay, next question. Do the puppies come with a vet check? Yes, they certainly do. Every puppy goes to our vet. They get checked for health. They get their first round of shots. They get their first round of deworming. And um, I'm not sure what happened there. My video cut out for a second. So yes, they come with uh, vaccinations, deworming, and their health check. Next question. Are the puppies CKC registered? No, they're not. We are raising unregistered purebreds. Their pedigree is every bit as good. They all come from registered stock. We have very specific reasons for not raging, raising registered dogs. And I'm happy to have that conversation with anybody that wants to know. They're not registered and we have not kept up the paperwork so they cannot be registered. Hopefully that answers that question. Another question that comes up is where are we? We are in Manitoba. If you want to Google map it, we're very close to Portage La Prairie, Manitoba. We are in the middle of Manitoba and only about, uh, oh, maybe an hour west of the geographical center of Canada. Gives you a pretty good idea where we are. Where I'm walking right now is our property. I'm staying on the road at the moment because there's so much snow, but we own this 80 acres and it goes way out in that direction half a mile this is where we live i gotta keep pausing the video come on ginger the dogs want to get off and wander come on ginge good girl come on ginger come come on i think she thinks she's in trouble it's <laughs> it's spring and uh they feel it in the air and it's hard to keep them together. And normally I would have Ginger on a leash because she does tend to run off. These two are the worst for running off. They're also the worst for pulling. I didn't think I could handle a third puller with one hand while I make a video. What was the question we were working on? What was it? Ah, oh, yes. Unregistered purebreds. Come on, Morty. What's the next question? Oh yeah, so here we are. This is where we live. And uh, we, we have seven full-time dogs. 
I call them seven full times and the puppies are, our, are the part timers. Come on, Poppy. Come on, Bobby. We are not getting any more dogs. This is it. We're set up very nicely for what we have. The little black one there, she lives inside the house with us. Poppy the poodle lives inside when she's clean. She spends most of her time currently outside with the big dogs. But we got her shaved down the other day because her curly hair can hold a lot of sand. And our ground here is extremely sandy. So she can bring a lot of mess into the house. But if you've watched any of our other videos, you know we have quite a nice setup. Come, Ginger, come on. Poppy, come. Sorry, I got to keep pulling them back. It's so terribly interesting out here. And up ahead in our pasture, there's uh, the remains of a deer carcass. And when we get close, it's very hard to keep them away. I'll probably have to take the muddy driveway <laughs> to avoid getting close to the deer carcass. That is like, like the play, play place at McDonald's for kids. Deer carcass for dogs. That is just heaven. They could just spend all day at that. Come, Poppy. Come on, Poppy. I think she's looking for squirrels. They're out in force right now. Come on, Poppy. Good girl. So, yeah, this is where we are. This is where we live. This is how we raise the dogs. We have a beautiful kennel. Where the big dogs live it's got a heated floor and running water and and they got a doggy door which allows them to come and go from their huge dog run all they want day and night <clears throat> so when i say outside dogs <laughs> it's a pretty cushy life they don't even live outside very well they live outside as much as they want but they come and go as much as they want ginger ginger come on sorry i gotta keep yelling but you look at the ground right now and all the snow's got to melt. This road's going to be muddy for a long time. The dogs get dirty. Imagine having them, all of them, in the house. That'd be crazy. Bus golden shed, as everybody knows. So yeah, this is, this is where we raise them. We walk them like this a couple times a day. Cooper here, he's, he's good off leash. Morty, he won't go too far from his pals. Poppy and Flora, they're fine off leash. It's the three females. It's these three girls here. They're bad for running off. Other than, otherwise, I'd let them free. I'd love to. I'd love to have them roam, but just can't do that. Certainly wouldn't work in town. It doesn't really work out here either. There's too much to smell and to chase after deer and horses and cattle. and Not to mention there's coyotes. A lot of coyotes around here, so... We just can't, we can't have them running off. For those of you that have been following my channel for a while, you know that a year ago, December, we lost two of our dogs. Uh, the gate didn't get closed properly. They got out. We never got them back. And we're quite certain they were stolen. There's been a huge problem with dog theft the last couple of years. There's been such a huge demand for puppies um, and dogs in general especially purebreds so just can't take that chance it's a bit of a long video but uh, I just wanted to answer some of those questions okay last couple questions all right I do have another question to answer but first just a little tour you see all this straw that was a bale house and they shredded every single bale and spread it out there was a nice bale house with a plywood roof on them to keep them out of the rain and the snow and give them shelter in the winter if they chose to stay outside. And this is what I get for it. Shredded. But they sure got a nice soft place to hang out. But when the bales are stacked up, come summertime, we can take them, take them out and burn them because they're relatively dry. Now the whole thing's a wet mat. Not exactly sure what we'll do this year, but we'll deal with it when the time comes. Here's their dog run. It's large. It's about 5,000 square feet. Two separate runs here with their own gates and their own pens. Sorry about all the poop. We clean it up in spring. But each of these pens has their own doggy door and leads to the inside. So now we'll head inside. And uh, just, just a quick look here. 
probably most of you have, well, some of you, many of you, have already seen the inside. Sometimes they're poorly behaved because they want attention. But uh, right now our whelping pens are empty. They each have their own doggy door. We closed this one off because there was puppies in here. We didn't want them going outside. This one's still open. So, yeah. It feels a little lonely and empty without any puppies in here, but it's only been a couple weeks and we'll get more here very soon. All right, I'm gonna answer one more question and there may be many more and if you have any, feel free to leave me a question in the comments. If you have my contact information, feel free to text me, email me, however you wanna reach out, I'll, I'll be happy to answer more questions. Last question is, you know, how do we know you're legit? Which is another way of saying, do you have any good references or how do we know we can trust you? Well, uh, fair question. Very fair question. And let's be honest, there's a lot of scammers out there. And I, I have to admit, I, I end up talking to a lot of people looking for puppies that have already been scammed or someone's attempted to scam them. So what we started to do, I don't know, a few years ago is we started to do exactly this. We started making our own YouTube videos. First, what we did was we we would just kind of update people on the puppies that they had reserved and they could watch them grow up in our kennel and sort of, um, yeah, just watch them grow up until the day they actually ship. And I continue making videos and posting right up until the moment I drop them off at the airport. So the last video you see um, the last video that you see of your puppy is just hours before it shows up and you've got them in your arms. But, um, yeah, so we started making the YouTube video, videos and started building this YouTube channel to kind of bridge the gap between the distance. You know, whether it's some of you in Victoria, Vancouver, Calgary, all over Saskatchewan, Ontario, Quebec... St. John's and now New Brunswick is the latest one we've sold into just about every province. Uh, I've had inquiries from the territories and I haven't had any inquiries from Prince Edward Island yet, but we'll see how that goes. We got our hands full, like shipping all over the country. It's, it's a bit of a job and we don't mind doing it, but how do we bridge the gap? Well, references. We have references and it's taken four years to build up to the place where we have references in every province that will vouch for us. So between the references and our YouTube channel and a lot of people have been asking about Instagram, and Facebook or a website. I am so, so not a social media person. Not that I'm, I'm opposed to it, but it's, it's a time consuming thing to do a good job of and I don't want to do a poor job of it. I think everybody understands what I mean by that. So essentially, up until recently, I didn't do anything social media wise. But I have finally started a Facebook page called Sandy Ridge. And some of you can have already found it. Um, I'm sure uh, it's, it wouldn't be that hard to find. I can post a link to it maybe in the description if I remember to do that when I actually post this video. So you've got the YouTube videos to, to show you who we are, how we raise our dogs. We're, we're just a family that lives in the bush. This is not a big commercial operation. We, we want you to watch us here and say, that's how I would want to see a dog treated. And honestly, the dogs aren't the biggest part of our life. Family is the biggest part of our life. I have a full-time job. We're just regular people. And for those of you that we've known for a while, you've probably heard me say the two biggest reasons we do what we do is we love the breed and we love to share it with people and we love people. Okay, that's three reasons. But really it's two. We love sharing the breed with other people and we love people. And we've met so many amazing people through all of this. The friendliest people that have been so welcoming. Um, that's why we do this. So yeah, dogs are a big part of our life. We, we've always had dogs. We love dogs. But it's not the biggest part of our life. Family comes first. People come first. In our lives, people will always come before dogs. Just I want to be very open and clear about that. 
Um, so we've got the YouTube channel. Um, I do have a Facebook page that I'm slowly building. Uh, I don't know a lot about social media. So it's just going to be posts of us, maybe some of our puppy buyers, life here, the puppies, etc., stuff like that. But most importantly is our references. And for all of you who have been a reference for us, I can't say thank you enough. Um, we've just, from the bottom of our hearts, we're, we're grateful for each one of you that has provided a reference for us. I apologize if I've <laughs> leaned on some of you too heavily, but that is, that is what has built our reputation. That is how we have continued to gain trust with folks. And my reputation is very important to me. And I, I, I do my best to maintain that. Um, stuff happens sometimes. I had one occasion a few years back where we lost a couple of puppies. Um, they were already spoken for. I already had deposits. It was an extremely difficult situation and had to work through that with the puppy buyer. It happened. It's just something that happened. Um, Yeah, I mean, stuff happens sometimes and we just, we take our reputation very seriously and and I feel that we have stepped up at times when we actually had no obligation to do so other than the obligation I feel from a relational standpoint um, to look after the people that we've come to know through this and to look after our reputation. So I hope that answers the question on are we legit? How can we trust you? Do you have references? Um, and if there's another question kind of related to this, please shoot me a comment. Uh, text me, WhatsApp me, email me, phone me. I'll be happy to talk about it. One of the things we've always tried to do is be accessible. Um, be as accessible as we possibly can. Like I say, I do work full time uh, in the agricultural industry. I sell farm machinery. I work with farmers. And my, my whole life is built around reputation. You know, when I work with these farmers, some of the deals are half a million to a million dollars. I just did a deal yesterday for $460,000. The only reason I say that is because the numbers are really, really big. Reputation from sales to support to service is absolutely critical in this industry. And I try to bring that to my puppy business as well as much as possible. The only references I've ever used in the puppy business or operation are puppy related references, but I got another 200 on the agricultural side of things that I built a relationship with over the last 10 years. And uh, some of them have become close friends and I had happily used them as references as well because some of them have also bought puppies from us. <laughs> so I'm rambling. My apologies. It's a bit of a longer video. Thanks for watching. I look forward to hearing from any of you that would love to chat. And if you're interested in the dog, but maybe you're not ready for six months or a year, feel free to drop me a line anyway. Um, I'd love to start chatting. And um, who knows? We'll see where it goes. Thanks for watching. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button, subscribe. Subscribe mainly so that you know what's happening with the puppies. We will certainly post as soon as we have puppies and continue to update as we go. So by subscribing, you will automatically be updated with anything that's happening around here. Take care, guys. Love you all. Talk soon. <laughs> Can't wait for spring.